Good day, everyone. I am Laura Alejandra Gomez, and I'm a PhD student from the University of Oklahoma. And today, I would like to talk about the selector reduction of carboxylic acid over promoting molybdenoxide carries. I hope you enjoyed this presentation, and I will be happy to answer any questions by the end of this presentation. Biomass conversion has been proposed as an alternative to mitigate the wild world dependency from petroleum based source. Gasification, fast pyrolysis, and hydrolysis are one of the three main chemical processes to convert biomass to high value chemicals and fuels. However, this requires further upgrading strategies. One of them are hydroxygenation, COLI upgrading, and emulsification. In order to compare acid, aldehydes, ketones, and phenolics to high value chemicals and fuels, we require to select it breaking the CO bond without saturating the CCW bond, and we are reducing the number of carbons on the molecule. So for this, we require a specific catalyst, but we are going to talk later about it. For now, let's focus how we can obtain from the biomass the pentinoic acid, which are the molecules we are going to study in this presentation. So from the biomass, we can obtain hemicellulose and cellulose, which can be converted to gamma verolat. From gamma verolactone, we can obtain pentinoic acid via ring opening chemistry. From pentinoic acid, we can obtain pentaldehyde via HDO reaction, and furthermore, pentadein via HDO reaction or butadein via decarboxylation reaction. For this presentation, we are going to focus in the conversion of pentinoic acid to pentaldehyde via HDO reaction. But uh, from this, we also can obtain butadiene and pentadiene. Um, these compounds are very important for the production of different types of polymers. One of them are the butadiene, uh, which can be used as a monomer for the production of synthetic rubber. Similar uh, chemistry can be applied for the conversion of acetic acid to ethanol. So, as I mentioned before, we are going to study in this presentation the conversion of carboxylic acid to aldehyde via HDO reaction. Um, different types of catalysts have been proposed for this. One of them are the metal catalysts, such as palladium, nickel, platinum, and ruthenium. These catalysts require high hydrogen pressure in order to prevent deactivation. However, as a bad side, this uh, increase hydrogenation reaction. Other types of catalysts that can be used is the oxophilic metal oxide. These catalysts are very good for HDO reaction because increase activity and the selectivity for breaking the CO. Also, reduce hydrogenolysis reaction. However, as a bad sign, these catalysts are very poor for hydrogen dissociation, and that is the reason usually requires metal promoters. The role of the metal promoters is to split the hydrogen, which is going to spill over at the surface and create zone defects or exposed zone cations that can be the active site for different types of chemistry. So let's study the selective conversion of the carboxylic acid or reducible oxide, more specific or molybdenoxide catalyst. So, we decided to study a um, molybdenum oxide catalyst because Professor Yuri Roman at the MIT have shown that the acetone can be converted to propylene over molybdenum oxide catalyst, which means that this catalyst is very good breaking the CO bond without saturating the CCW bond. He has also shown that this catalyst is very selective for the conversion of aldehydes, ketones, and alcohols. However, this catalyst has not been used before for the conversion of carboxylic acid. So we are interested to study and know if unsaturated products can be obtained. So what happens when we expose this catalyst under carboxylic acid at elevated temperature? So we found that this catalyst is very selective indeed. Uh, we perform these reactions in a wide range of temperatures. Um, before of each reaction, we did um, reduction at 400 Celsius degree. We studied the product selectivity and the conversion. Um, we found that this catalyst um, is very selective to pentanal and the pentanal remains the more selective product for all the conversion levels. We also found that a high temperature uh, decarboxylation and ketonization products are observed. So in order to understand a little more this um, difference in product selectivity, we perform isoconversion experiment. 
Uh, and we found that at different temperatures, the selectivity to pentanal is different, but it's more remarkable at uh, high conversion levels. So one of the explanations we have for this is that uh, some uh, byproducts can absorb very strongly at the surface, like CO, and also that at high temperature, the overreduction is promoting, which um, enhance the carboxylation and ketonization reactions. So as I mentioned before, this catalyst is very good for breaking the CO without saturating the CCW bonds. However, one of the challenges with this catalyst is that it's very hard to reduce. So from TPR results, we can see that um, this catalyst starts to reduce at 650 Celsius, which means that requires very high temperature to be active for hydrogen dissociation. Professor Yuri Roman, in a DFT study for the conversion of acetone to propylene, showed that the relimiting step is the hydrogen dissociation. So in order to overcome with this challenge, we synthesize a catalyst with 0.05% of platinum. Uh, this is with the idea to create some uh, small clusters as we see in the cartoon that um, are able to split the hydrogen and create some defects or expose some cations that we believe are the active site uh, for this chemistry. So let's see what happened when we add 0.05% of platinum or molybdenum oxide in the conversion and the selectivity. So we found that at lower temperatures, um, we see that this catalyst is very selective. Uh, we also found that at lower temperatures, uh, the conversion uh, on, moly on platinum or molybdenum oxide is higher when it's compared with molybdenum by itself. However, when we go at high temperatures, we start to see that uh, decarboxylation and decarbonylation reactions are the dominant reactions. We also found that molybdenum at a high temperature have higher rate conversion compared with platinum molybdenum side. So this, uh, so we see a shift in the rate of conversion at high temperatures. So in order to understand this, we always try to answer this question uh, using kinetics. So for that, we calculate the activation energy for molybdenum oxide. We found that the activation energy is 69 kilojoules per mole, and for platinum is 37 kilojoules per mole. It's important to mention that these uh, were calculated on the first order kinetic regime. Um, so what tell us these, um, these results? Well, um, this show that incorporation of platinum uh, enhance the hydrogen dissociation and reduce the kinetic barrier. We also did some characterizations that uh, in order to study more the influence of these metal clusters on molybdenum oxide, we found from TPR results that the temperature of reduction decreased 300 Celsius degrees when we add 0.05% of uh, platinum. We also were interested to study uh, the surface of the catalyst and we performed SPS and we found that in fact um, there is a big change when we add 0.05%. We found that molybdenum uh, plus 5 uh, increased almost uh, two times when we add 0.05%. Um, we also found that um, for molybdenum plus 4 increased very drastically when we are um, a, this very tiny amount of platinum. From the beginning, we have been um, hypothesized that molybdenum plus 5 is the, re, is the um, applied side for STO reaction. However, other authors also have claimed that molybdenum plus 4 is responsible for some deactivation. So what can uh, these results tell us? Well, that when we add 0.05%, we are creating more aptitude size, but also uh, if we work at very high temperatures, we are going to um, increase the, the presence of molybdenum plus 4, which can be responsible for some deactivations the, from these colors. So many authors have claimed that this chemistry is via reverse mouse gravity mechanism where the acid is absorbed on the oxygen vacancies and released as aldehyde. 
The role of the hydrogen is to regenerate and produce some oxygen vacancies at the surface. We were very interested to study the effect of hydrogen on molybdenum oxide. We performed a reaction when we changed the partial pressure of hydrogen, and we found that the rate of conversion decreased when we decreased the partial pressure of hydrogen. We also did a reaction when we changed the hydrogen flow to helium flow, and we found that in the absence of hydrogen, any product is observed. So we were very intrigued uh, about it, and we decided to perform some pulse experiments, and we found that uh, any product was observed. So we hypothesized that this uh, chemistry is a little more complicated than reverse mode probably mechanisms, and the as the hydrogen is used as a reactant for the hydrogenation reaction to the pentaldehyde, and it's not only used for regeneration and production of the oxygen vacancy. So we were very interested in this chemistry. Um, we decided to study a little more, so we performed some DFT calculations. We consider two different types of conformation of the pentanoic acid on the defects. Uh, one of them was a BACOH bond, and the other one was BACOW bonds. Uh, for our calculations, we didn't consider this type of atrocion because um, based on our uh, pulse experiments, we found that in the absence of hydrogen, um, this hydrogen cannot migrate directly to the carbonyl group. So for our calculations, we only consider this uh, type of absorption. So the concerted mechanism was no study in these uh, DFT calculations. Um, we consider that the pentanoic acid was absorbed in the defects and the hydrogen was extracted from the COH bond. And this was back donated to the carbonyl group. So let's look uh, more in detail in the transition state. Uh, we can see that the CO, the length of the CO bond is, uh, is broken before that the hydrogen is donated back to the carbonyl group. So this tells us that the hydrogen addition to the carbonyl group is a rate limiting state over the overall process. We also uh, compare the apparent activation energy uh, from the DST study uh, with our experimental data. Uh, we see uh, some difference. Um, however, we hypothesize that uh, these differences uh, are observed because the hydrogen uh, surface cover is different. So for our DFC calculations, we only consider one hydrogen atom. However, we know in the our reality that at the surface we have so many hydrogen atoms and OH group. We also compare uh, our experimental data with a TFT study uh, done for the professor Juri Roman for the conversion of acetone to propylene over pristine molybdenum site. Uh, he calculated the relimiting step and he found that uh, the apparent activation energy is 100 kilojoules for more higher than our experimental data. However, we hypothesize that this difference in the apparent activation energy uh, is due to the nature of the surface. So he is considered a pristine molybdenum However, we know that for our molybdenum catalyst, um, we have so many defects at the surface, and this could change the apparent activation energy that we get. So finally, for summary, we have that the molybdenum is very selective for the conversion of carboxylic acids, that the addition of 0.05% of platinum can increase the rate under mild conditions, and also that the hydrogen coverage on the surface play a big role in, acceler in the acceleration uh, of the rate. And um, finally, that the hydrogen is used as a reactant in the hydrogenation reaction to the pentaldehyde. Finally, I just want to thank you for your time and for your attention, and I will be happy to answer any questions.